I vividly remember the day I came to believe in God. Now, I grew up in church, but it was a have-to thing, and I wanted to sleep in on Sunday and go box with my friends or ride bikes. and so A lot of things, uh, while they stuck, did go in one ear and out the other. At a young age, I lost my pat ball. I was just about 12, and we were pretty tight. And much of my life, I've turned sorrow into anger. I've just channeled it that way. Uh, try not to do that anymore. A negative emotion is going to be a negative emotion, what, no matter what you try to turn it into. But I turned this anger into God, after all. Any loving God that existed wouldn't have done that to my papa, or to my mama, or to me. That's actually a very good point. I hope you can explain that somewhere in the rest of your video. And so over the period of the next year, I even developed, you know, I had to explain all this stuff around me and myself, um, how it existed without a God. You don't have to explain everything about the universe. You could try to explain certain portions of it through various fields of science. The truth is we might never know everything about the universe and we might never be able to explain everything about the universe. And it's okay to say, I don't know. It's okay to say, we can't explain it. But besides that, you have to remember what Laplace once told Emperor Bonaparte when the emperor asked him, so I heard you wrote this book that explains the workings of the universe, yet you mention no God. You don't mention its creator. And the plot simply replied with, well, sir, it seems to work without that hypothesis. I even concocted a, uh, you know, I know how Earth was made, a bunch of elements floating around in space. They bumped in each other, some stuck. They were spinning around, so the edges would round off. And after a long time, you got a big round ball. And I wasn't thinking about the systems involved in that, of course. Well, that's that's kind of true. You you did a pretty good job. That's 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 not bad. Hey, that's a, that's a starting point. My dad and I went hunting because after all, that's what you do in Texas. You you go out on September first to take out the symbol of peace. There's some irony for you. So I'm waiting in this bush to do just that. Something moved out of the corner of my eye, and I instinctively put my bead on this beautiful, cute little baby cottontail rabbit. He was about 10 feet away. I was looking at him. He was looking at me and he cocked his head, did that dog thing like he's contemplating you. And he was. He was soaking me in. In an instant, with my barrel aimed at this God's creature, I had what they call an epiphany. And it dawned on me in an instant, man. This little critter, I can't explain. It's got multiple systems I know nothing about, from neurology to skeletal and on and on. Firstly, you are making an argument from personal incredulity, which is unnecessary. And secondly, there are ways to understand the systems of animals. There are ways to go research these things. There are ways to look online about evolutionary biology of rabbits and other animals to figure out what you don't know. It's that simple. I knew that there was no explanation for this little being other than somewhere, sometime, someone went poof. Which of the following seem more reasonable? Tons and tons of evidence, a plethora of evidence in which we can distinguish how animals evolved over time, or someone waving a magic wand and saying poof. And I began to cry and I put down my gun and I went and told my dad. We went and got ice cream. Aww, well that was a cute ending. I really like, hey, wait a minute. You didn't try to explain why an all-loving God would allow pain and suffering in a world he created. You just kind of went on with that whole rabbit thing. But I'll let this one slide, because you know what? That was one hell of a cute ending. <laughs>